ALS is a disease that creeps up on you. For Dr. Dina Fadina, it started with swallowing. Now, Dr. Fadina's ALS has progressed to the point where she can no longer talk. And eight months ago, it forced her to stop practicing medicine. Today, I interviewed the doctor, who has now very much become the patient. And she would count one, two, three, and they had we gathered around the kitchen table of their Austin town home, Dr. Dina Fadina, her husband Joe Navicki, and their daughter Natalia. Because of ALS, Dr. Fadina can no longer speak. So when I asked why go public with her story, she could only answer by writing on a pad with her husband translating. And it's important for people to understand um, and support the research. Graduated by ISU in 1980 and received medical degree in 1982. In preparation for our interview, Dr. Fadina wrote up a statement, and we had her daughter read it. My dad was a Youngstown police officer in the detective division. Dinah Fadina can trace her Youngstown roots to the early 1900s when her grandparents came from Ukraine to work in the mills. She was valedictorian of the Cheney class of 1976 and after medical school went into family practice and teaching. The first signs of ALS came in March of 2017. She first noticed it when she had some issues swallowing and in the year or two prior to that Sometimes you could tell when we were eating that something just wasn't working correctly. By September 2018, with her voice gone, ALS forced her out of medicine, but not out of life. She still has full mobility. She still organizes a bi-monthly community dinner at her church. Communication, though, can be frustrating. You know, even though her handwriting's good, to interpret short messages and understand exactly what she wants to do is... It's challenging. In some ways, I think it has been holding my daughter and husband, and I'm so grateful to them and proud of how they have handled it. There is no cure for ALS, so the inevitability of what's to come has been discussed. We've made plans for several things. The patients know they are ill and may be different and have a perhaps different future, but deep down are still the same people. Don't be afraid of them as they have loved knowledge and hope to give. After Dr. Fadina resigned from Mercy Health and the Northeast Ohio Medical University, her friends and colleagues started a scholarship in her name. It will go to a third-year Neo-Med student studying primary care. The first scholarship will be awarded next month.